is two weeks before the messenger died. The Prophet was sitting with his companions and he became very sad. He said, I yearn. He said, I yearn to meet my brothers and I yearn to meet my sisters. Bilal radiallahu anhu looked to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, your brothers and your sisters are here, we're here. And the Prophet looked at all of his companions. He looked at Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, the greatest people to walk the face of this earth from this Ummah. And he said, you are not my companions, you are not my brothers. You're my companions. He said, my brothers, my brothers and my sisters are those who will come. They will believe in me and they have not seen me. And the Prophet said, I can't wait. I wish I could meet you guys. Now imagine for a second that man who took brotherhood away from his companions and ascribed it to me and you. Wallahi, the Prophet called us his brothers and sisters. Imagine if the Prophet stood right here. Imagine he stood here after Ramadan. 30 days we stood in the last third of the night crying to Allah, saying, Allah, forgive me for my sins. Then literally the next day, the Prophet saw us out here, free mixing boys and girls dressed in appropriately, smoking shisha. Wallah, I'm not judging anyone. I'm here just to give you the reminder that Allah told me to give you. But how embarrassed and sad would you feel that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would see you in such a state? Brothers, take yourself, my brothers and sisters, take yourself to the Day of Judgment. On a day when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَعَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Allah said, your mom will run away from you. Brother, you will run from your mom. Wallahi, your mom will smile at you burning in the hellfire. Wallahi, Billahi, Tallahi, ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْحَقِّ you will see it with these eyes, the same way you see my face today. You will see people whose mothers are smiling and thanking Allah that their sons and daughters are burning in the hellfire because they got saved. The mother got saved because she took some deeds from that son and daughter that wronged the mom. That day your mom won't spare you. On that day, the only man that will look around, the only man who will go around into such that he will fall, waiting, crying to Allah so that we can be saved and go to Jannah is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I tell you something, Wallah, he won't recognize you unless you are from those who prayed because the hadith of the Prophet tells us that the Prophet will notice you from the marks of sajda on your foreheads and the marks of wudu on your arms. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will go to certain people however. People like us who pray in Ramadan. So we're going to have a few marks of sajda, we're going to have a few parts of wudu on our arms. But we didn't worship Allah like we were supposed to. We are Ramadan Muslims, Eid Muslims, Juma Muslims. The Prophet will see people like that. The Prophet will go to them to save them. The angels will envelop them and say, Ya Muhammad stay away, I'm taking these people to the fire. The Prophet will say, they're from my Ummah. These people are from my Ummah, leave them. The angels will say, Ya Muhammad, you don't know what they did after you left. The Prophet will say, that very same man who cried every night for me and you so we could be saved. But when the day comes where you will meet Allah and whatever has been established has been established, the Prophet will look at you and say, Suhqun, Suhqun. Get away from me, take them away from me. But those who prayed, even though, even though our life was difficult, there was fitting out all around us, even though people called us to come out to the shisha cafes, to the clubs, your girlfriend called you, your boyfriend called you, even though that happened, the Prophet will grab those people. He will say, come, come, come. He will save you from the fire take you to the gates of Jannah where there is a fountain called al kawthar He'll dip his hands in, he'll say drink, drink, drink from my hands, drink from my hands. Are you okay? Go into paradise. Enter with peace for eternity, happiness and never ending happiness that will never cease brothers and sisters and never ending happiness that will never leave. How? 
How do you get to that stage? And I'll leave you with this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a time will come when holding on to my religion, holding on to Islam will become as difficult as holding on to charcoal. The charcoal that we smoke shisha with. The Prophet said, try and hold on to it. It burns you, let go of it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that's what my religion will become like. Is it not like that today? We come to the masjid, but then the heat, the heat of the girls and the guys and the music and the haram, it grabs you, right? So it's hard to hold on to Islam. The Prophet gave you an advice in another hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Be patient and you will drink from my hands at the fountain of Al-Kawr. Brothers and sisters, Wallah, I don't get paid for this. Wallah, it's because I love you for the sake of Allah. I came from this life. There is no khair. Please come back to Allah. Please become a person who establishes Tawheed, the oneness of Allah in his or her heart. And never, ever, ever forget the prayer and strive to follow the sunnah of the Prophet. So on that day when you're resurrected, <coughs> when that day when the trumpet is blown, you will be of those who are saved. Because I tell you one thing, Wallahi is a day of truth. And you will, every single one of us will see it. And the quote of Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziyah suffices for us to leave with. He said, if the Qur'an doesn't soften your hearts in this world, if by you reciting the Qur'an, your hearts do not become soft in this world, he said, then wait to the day of judgment for when Allah shows you the hellfire, your hearts will become soft. But we have an opportunity to not see that ever. Take the most honorable part of your face, place it as low as you can, five times a day, never forget. And I promise you on that day, Everyone will turn their back on you, but Allah will suffice you. So who will come? We're going to make the adhan insha'Allah. And I urge you guys to pray with us. Wallahi, we're not trying to upset you. We're not trying to call you to anything dodgy. All we're trying to call you to is Tawheed of Allah and Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there anyone, is there anyone who would like to give the adhan? And we'll get the reward. Barakallahu fiq akhi. Barakallahu fiq akhi. Listen to the call of prayer. Okay, the Qibla is this way, inshallah. This way. This way. Yeah. I think we, we need to do We need to do it. You can make wudu from any one of these places, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we're from Germany. Ah, mashallah. Came to this. Allah, give me a number. Assalamu alaikum. Akhi, the riwayah which you mentioned. Um, level not your toes. Still, I tell you. Alhamdulillah <laughs>